to the studio. You don't like it? You could kiss my booty hoe. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, sorry, that's a bad way to start. Badass woman in her string. No offense to anybody. Uh, um, badass woman in her string. Lagertha. Uh, Lagertha as imagine. Oh, wait, that's just describing the picture. So, Lagertha. According to legend, was a Viking ruler and shield maiden from what is now Norway, and the one-time wife of the famous Viking Ragnar Lodbrok. Her tale was recorded by the chronicler Saxo in the 12th century. According to the historian Judith, Judith Jesh, Saxo's tales about warrior women are largely fictional. What? Other historians wrote that they may have a basis in tales about the Norse deity Thorgr. I think they're trying to just take credit away from women in, in her story. I think they're trying to say that that's fake, but I think it's bullshit. I think it's real. Her name, as recorded by Saxo uh, Lathgertha, is likely a Latinization of the Old Norse uh, Lagerth. It has also been recorded as Lagertha, Ladgertha, Ladgerda, or similar. Life according to Saxo Grammaticus. According to the Saxo, uh, Lagertha lived in the Gola Valley in western Norway. Uh, her tales recorded in passages in the ninth book of the Gesta Denorum, a 12th century work of Danish history by the Christian historian Saxo Grammaticus. According to the Gesta, Lagertha's career as a warrior began when Fro, king of Sweden, invaded Norway and killed the Norwegian king Siward. Fro put the woman of the dead king's family into a brothel for public humiliation. Hearing of this, Ragnar Lothbrok came with an army to avenge his grandfather, Seward. Many of the women Fro had ordered abused, dressed themselves in men's clothing, and fought on Ragnar's side. Chief among them, and key to Ragnar's victory, was Lagertha. Saxo recounts, Lagertha, a skilled Amazon, who, though a maiden, had the courage of a man, and fought in front of among the bravest with her hair loose over her shoulders. All marveled at her matchless deeds, for her locks flying down her back betrayed that she was a woman. Impressed with her courage, Ragnar courted her from afar. Lagertha feigned interest, and Ragnar arrived to seek her hand, bidding his companions wait in the Garlar Valley. He was set upon by a bear and a great hound, to which Lagertha had guarded her home. But he killed the bear with a spear and choked the hound to death. Thus, he won the hand of Lagertha. According to Saxo, Ragnar, see back then, you didn't have to get no diamond ring. You just had to kill a bear. Kill a wolf. It's all good. According to Saxo, Ragnar had a son with her, Freydleif, as well as two daughters whose names are not recorded, unfortunately. After returning to Denmark to fight a civil war, Ragnar, who, according to Saxo, was still annoyed, that Lagertha had set beast against him. Yeah, was he was holding a grudge, he had a chip on his shoulder. He was like, no, nah, I didn't have to get no diamond ring, but I did have to kill that big ass bear. That's almost, that weighs on me. You know, I dream about that bear all the time. Uh, <clears throat> so he divorced her in order to marry Thora Borjort, uh, daughter of King um, Harar, Sweden. He won the hand of his new love after numerous adventures, but upon return to Denmark was again faced with the civil war. Ragnar sent to Norway for support, and Lagertha, who still loved him, came to his aid with 120 ships, according to the Saxo Grammaticus. When at the height of the battle, Ragnar's son Seward was wounded, Lagertha saved the day for Ragnar with the counterattack. Lagertha, who has who had a matchless spirit through a delicate though a delicate frame, covered by her splendid bravery, the inclination of the soldiers to waver, for she made a sally about and flew around. To the near to the and flew round to the rear of the enemy, taking them unawares, and thus turned the panic of her friends into the camp of the enemy. Upon returning to Norway, she quarreled with her husband and slew him with a spearhead she concealed in her gown. Saxo concludes that she then usurped the whole of his name and sovereignty, for this most presumptuous dame thought it pleasanter to rule without her husband than to share the throne with him. I mean, I don't blame her. Saxo sources. According to Judith Jesh, the rich variety of tales in the first nine books of Saxo's, Saxo's Gesta, which includes the tale of Lagertha, are generally considered to be largely fictional. Hater. If 
portraying the several warrior women in these tales, Saxo drawn the legend of the Amazons from classical antiquity, but also on a variety of Old Norse, particularly Icelandic sources, which may, which have not been clearly identified. Excuse me. Saxo's depiction of women warriors is also colored by misogyny. Like most churchmen at the time, Saxo thought of women as only sexual beings. To him, the Viking shield maidens who refused this role were an example of the disorder in old heathen Denmark that was later cur cured by the church and a stable of mon and a stable monarchy. Hmm. But they admitted they existed, so I don't see what Julius Jesh is tripping about. Oh, Lagather is probably fake. Okay, but there was women that were warriors. Um, they just had some influence from the Amazons. Like Wonder Woman. A woman called, uh, I can't pronounce that. Let me, let me, uh, let's see what, let's copy, let's see how that sounds right here. Uh, let me try to read, let's see, copy. Right click, right click, copy, paste it, right click, right click, copy, paste it. All right, let's see, pronunciation, pronun I don't even know, pronunciation. All right, let's see what they say. I wonder if it's going to do. I should have just went to Google, man. Duck, duck, go be tripping some time, bro. All right, let's hear it. All right, yeah. Algelder. A woman called Algelder, who rules the Aldiar, also appears in the sagas of the 6th century gliding King Halfdan, who was in the show, but, you know, they portray Halfdan as the brother of uh, King Harold Finehair. Captain is a cool character. See, that's, it's also, like, good for, like, because <clears throat> it shows how the Vikings weren't as uptight when it came to sexuality uh, as the Christians were and are sometimes. Um, when Saxo describes Lagather as flying around, oh, wait, I didn't even finish. Oh, she gives him 20 ships to help defeat his enemies. Hilda Ellis Davidson, in her commentary on the Gesta, also notes suggestions in the literature that the name was used by the Franks, for instance, by Ludegard of Vermandoy uh, from 914 to 978, and that the tale of Lagather could have originated in Frankish tradition. I don't know. Who knows? Only Lord knows. When Saxo describes Lagather as flying around, to the rear of the enemy, he ascribes to her the power of flight. Oh, so they meant literally. And I don't think they meant literally, bro. I think they meant like she was flying, like she was running fast as fuck. Uh, according to Jess, indicating the kinship with the Valkyries. Uh, I think you're taking that. That's a reach, but maybe, whatever. The tale notably recalls that of Kara, the Valkyrie lover of Helgi, uh, Hadding Zagati, who flies above Helgi in battle as a swan, casting spells in his support. Excuse me. Uh, identity with Thorger. Davidson deems it possible, as Nora K. Chadwick considered very probable, that Lagather is identical with Thorgerd, a goddess reflected in several stories. Thorgerd was worshipped by, and sometimes said to be wed to, the Norwegian wooler Hakon Sigurdsson. Uh, from 937 to 995, who lived at Laid, or Halder. 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 This may be the origin of the name, the one that we said earlier, Halder. Um, Gualara, the Gualar Valley, where Lagather lived, according to Saxa, lies nearby and was the center of Thorgard's cult. It was also, according to Snorri Storosin, the abode of Stor Snorri Stor Storosin, Storlison, Snorri, he was a uh, S N O R R I. He wanted he he wrote a lot of the Icelandic sagas, which is about Ragnar and the sons of and the anything that's not in the Saxon Grammaticus from the Saxons. He wrote it was Snorri for the Norse. <clears throat> um, 
So she was portrayed in fiction several times. Uh, Kristen Pram's historical drama Lagrotha in 1789 is based on Saxo's account. Oh, that came out during the revolution. The choreographer, or I mean like, you know, in that time period. The choreographer Vincenzo Galliotti based his ballet Lagrotha from 1801, the first ballet to feature a Nordic theme on Pram's work. That's pretty tight. And then, of course, in Vikings, which you talked about over there, she's portrayed by Catherine Winnick, who actually knows how to fight and shit. She was like a trainer and she, a trainer for actors to know how to like fight good. And uh, she became Lagatha. Lagatha. Badass woman in her history. All right. So, we need to bust the flow, ladies and gentlemen. We need to find a beat. Uh, uh, uh.